Okay, this is the August 17th, 2015th edition of the North Kuchiching Area Sanitary District. Call to order. Uh, roll call. Everyone here except for Tom is out sick. Uh, anybody um, in the audience like to address the board? Okay. Uh, now we have uh, one uh, addition and deletion. An addition, a uh, membership, Messer bill, and membership. I don't know if that's in the claims as no. well. No. It's not in the claims, so um, we would have to add that to the claims if we vote in the affirmative for this. Um, is anybody, everybody's read the the letter from Messer. Uh, so what our cost is twenty eight hundred and sixty one dollars and ten cents. Yeah. Uh, you know I'm not going to speak either in favor or against. Uh, I, I I think that in the condition we're in, we better think pretty. Um, our revenues are going to be down this year. We promised no increase in in rates to the entities. Uh, I don't think that should be discussed now. We're going to put it in claims. That's when it should be discussed. Just along with everything else that's in claims. Well, okay. I mean, either way we do it, okay, we'll, uh, then we'll just say we'll put it in claims and then yeah. we can discuss it when we get the claims. We have a motion, Mr. Chairman, to put it in claims for discussion. I would so move to put it in claims for discussion. I'll second. All right. Motion second in discussion. Okay, let's vote. Aye. Aye. No. No. Aye. Yes. Yes. What was it? How many uh, no? One, two, three no's? Robert, did you vote yes or no? Yes. Two, two no's. Two no's. Unless you're voting. Pardon? Unless you're voting no. No, I voted yes. Okay. Yeah. But we Just have to remember notes. so that we don't, uh, that we put that in the claims section here. Uh, okay. Minutes of the July 20 board meeting. Any. Uh, so move to approve. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, Doug seconded. Uh, any discussion? Well, I know on this reading on the director's report, I don't remember a lot of those things that were discussed at the meeting last month, but maybe it was just like, me. Like? Uh, um, I don't... We did talk about the I and I a little bit, but I don't think we got into any facts and figures on it. I touched on Duluth, and John said Duluth was high. That's why I put it in there. This shows you the monster that I and I is. That would be good information. I guess that's a uh, another future issue that this. It will have to be discussed at this meeting. All right. Any other discussion? Okay. If none, then we'll uh, vote on the acceptance of the minutes. Aye. 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 Good boy, yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Motion carried uh, unanimously. Okay, construction. Project update, Mark Allen is here. Yep, good morning, gentlemen. Um, really, uh, it would be great to touch on for the uh, automatic systems. Was here back uh, last Tuesday. Terry Moore was on site Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to work being on the various computer programming. If, since last February, there was a few screens that weren't updating and uh, various components. Uh, pumps 38, 39, 40, seal, fell alarms. Terry went through, I'll say, uh, half a dozen items, six or more 
items that staff had kept a track of, had to work out some issues with Wonderware, that's the actual uh, program supplier, but he left here last Thursday around 11 a.m. and at that time had addressed all the items that uh, we had on our, you know, staff had on our list for uh, various glitches that they had reported over time. Also, he was able to set up the uh, full equalization basin, PCS7, he has to set it up at tags level for um, a, a two pair uh, control wire for your bypass valve out there. That's something that, you know, or, you know it was on Bob Ratway's list, you know, from you know, yes. January, July of 2014. So we have that programming set up. Uh, I will be going out there looking at the conduit with uh, staff after the meeting. And then we're gonna, you know, whether Jeff Cloud can purchase a cable and pull it, make determinations, or whether we have to get a contractor uh, in a you know, local, just a local electrical, you know, to pull a two pair of shielded cable through it. But once we have that cable pulled and hooked up to the valve, say automatic systems does have the programming in place and is, uh, you know, and is ready so we can implement the, uh, you know, the operation of that valve from the wastewater treatment plant here or from PCS7 inside the well house. Okay. Um, Gritter construction, you know, you know, Andy was here last Thursday, finished, you know, work on the fire, some of the work on the fiberglass door, but really, uh, you know, what Gritter construction has uh, completed here, you know, in the last four weeks has, has been minor. I mean, they have not been here with any staff other than their subcontractor automatic systems here for a three day period, cleaning up the various controls items. Uh, so I'm gonna, you know, I told staff, I'm gonna pretty much, you know, go around and I, you know, got my list from July I you know you know the major thing is like we have some major running and I pointed out we have that settled bituminous at the equalization basin around the wet well and you know that's a major you know somebody's got to come in and mill out so we can bring in some hot mix bituminous you know agreed last May when we walked out and it was settled we agreed we were going to wait till later this summer to see if it moved it is you know I talked to staff and you know agreed you know it's moved once you know and it sat there now since May uh, where it is, so it's probably stabilized itself. You know, you actually did clean out your full equalization basin this summer. We used that pump, uh, that 65 horsepower pump. You know, everything ran for quite a, you know, several days while that was being done, and you know, everything worked. So we shouldn't have any other issues around that wet well. But you know, that's a major item because you just, you know, that's not a matter of coming in and spreading out some cold patch because that'll just break away the first time staff tries to plow snow. We actually have to mill, get a hot mix laid in to. There's about an inch and a half gap or so. I shouldn't say gap, settlement next to that full equalization structure. Uh, Mark, one, yep. one thing, when you, as you go through these things, if you can tell us uh, what stuff is under, could be paid for under the original contractor, or by the or under the original contract, and if the contractor's uh, uh, responsible, or the sub, or who's responsible for paying for it, and what comes out of change order, uh, or what comes out of the, our settlement, um, you know, if you Punch could. List. Pardon? Punch well, list. yeah, I mean, like this work at the, you know, I mean, this, you know, at the full equalization basin to mill and patch that bituminous, correct, that's Ritter Construction's responsible, you know, for their costs, you know, on, that's a punch list item under his contract, and that work has to be completed, you know, before, the, you know, this district will then, you know, proceed through the final payment. Um, you know, portion of this project. I mean, right now, you know, he has not, you know, there's been no payments, you know, for four months, and we're waiting for him to complete his punch list items then before we can proceed with the project closeout. So, a major item like that, you know, it, you know that is Gritter's construction responsibility. Okay, how about the uh, instrumentation work now? Right, I mean, the, that's the original contract. That's, that's the original still, contract. So, we won't be paying for any of that? No, no, that's, you know, that, that's, like you say, that was on the, you know, we were trying to schedule that last February. Uh, if you remember, we had to get Ashbrook Simon Hartley back in from Texas on the gravity belt thickener. They got delayed twice. We didn't get them in actually till late March. But then, you know, automatic systems didn't coordinate with that date. So, John, like I say, we've been, you know, it finally took them this long to get them back to address a bunch of items we were hoping to address last March. Yeah, is it a problem, though, uh, Mark, with uh, getting these people to respond to us? At this point in time, or uh, that's the question I had. Do we have a sunset on these punch list items? Well, from the standpoint, technically, no. I mean, he's got, you know, I mean, at some point, I'll say yes. You don't want to, 
keep addressing this. So I'm offering that if you know, you know, we talked about the seating and a few things that have come back. You know, that's what I'll be, you know, more or less implying on greater construction. We want to see this wrapped up here uh, from the standpoint because as far as the district, you want to close everything out with PFA and and complete everything. So you know, we would like to see this stuff wrapped up here this September, October, and be done with you. Period. So. so if, you know, if there, are, if there are certain items now, like, um, Greg Corby got a letter from uh, the uh, tank manufacturer here, um, in Junior America. They're coming back to do their one-year warranty. You have an extended warranty on that tank, so kind of like a roof. They want you had it in use now. They want to come out. You know, their paint. It's not a cost to the district. They're coming out to go once staff empties it after you do your summer or fall year application of bile solids, and the tank is empty drained out for the winter, then they're gonna come back and look at it just to make sure that, you know, there's not some issues that they need to address to continue their warranty on that tank. Mr. Chair? Yeah, uh, Donald. Mark, would it be possible we could get an updated list of the punch list? Yes. I mean, yep. not, the, not the complete punch list, the, I said what? The, the remaining items that... As we talked about last month, you go through the list of 200 some items, there's about 20 some items on here that have the red circles and that's what you like it you like it consolidated down to a page rather than yes all that's understood. what's left what's that's left. what we want okay so hey, uh, Mike, you do we have a timetable with uh psa do we have a is there a timetable where we have to be completed we extended the loan through june of 2016. Oh, okay but uh, what i'm offering is you know from the standpoint of for, for just construction, we want to we want to push the right buttons or whatever to get stuff completed yet this fall, so that we are done with it. And it's you know I mean it's extended till then, but then you know Stacy and Chopper can make the you know decision when they want to essentially uh, you know complete that work, you know with the PFA. Can the staff run the plant from their phones? Yes. Uh, Last, uh, I don't agree, we had, you know, Pete Nelson with IPS out of Foston, Minnesota. You, you, you know, this board approved that it was $1,300 aware wear for uh, it's TeamViewer. Yeah. You have TeamViewer. You know, that is a software that they have installed that they, you know, I mean, I'll say they can change settings, David. You know, they can view all alarms and they can make changes. Um, you know, I'll understand just, you know, they, you have to be here in person to run something, okay? But they can, you know, review all alarms. They can make, you know, they can make change settings. They can shut off alarms. You know, they'll be able to view the uh, full equalization tank. They, you know, they can view on their phone the levels real time. Uh, you know, and they can, you know, change the pump speed, but I'll offer from the standpoint of the, you know, term running the plant, you know, that's still a, a physical, they gotta be here. But I mean, yeah. they can use their phones for everything they are intended for. There's nothing electronically that's in that plant that's supposed to be run through their phones that they can't run. You're saying they can run everything. Whatever that phone is in their pocket designed for, that we're paying for, that they can use it for is complete on this project. With the, the one item we have is the bypass valve on the full equalization tank. Program has been set up. Now we got to get that, you know, two pair of plus, you know, uh, it's 150 feet of you know wire, and we have to make those terminations on that valve. So there is one item that you know right now they're not able to view and work with on their phone. Um, you know that that they could before. So can, can, do is we it have going to be done? Is there a schedule on it? I mean, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll we'll talk with Greg as soon as we can get the wires. Well, the, you know, the terminations and PC Evan, the programming was you know, completed here by automatic systems last Wednesday and Thursday of last week. So that was the major part, getting them to write that into their programming. And the terminations are marked in PS7. Now it's a matter of pulling two wires and making the connections. And then, you know, I'm, and Greg, I apologize. I mean, I understand through Terry's email, he didn't review with you the screen that he has set up. Yep. yep. So I mean, and Greg said, it's, it's, you know, that's why I talked with Terry last Tuesday to pretty much, you know, went to and gave him how staff wanted that level set up for the operators you know set up a level and how they you know and how the gate was going to be controlled so that's my understanding now so we get it going dave i'm not going to say it's where but i mean we you know staff told us how they wanted it and that's how it's been set up 
Our, no. And we don't have to buy any more software. No. no. Okay. That's all. And and we will receive all the software that was spec'd out in the in the original specs. We're going to receive all that backup software. I know that there was a situation in East Cooch where something got dumped, uh, uh, and it was a twenty or a two thousand dollar bill to get somebody up here for. 15 minutes worth of work to reload the software. I mean, that was with your Healy Rough system. Yeah. Do we have a proprietary issue at all? No. So, if it is, well, when you say proprietary, it's, I mean, automatic systems wrote all the programming. Now, they have no patent on it, There's, it's not proprietary. I mean, you know, when, if you remember the three way valve out at the ponds, they gave a price of about 18000 to hook that up and write into the programming. And we, you know, the district actually hired, you know, IPS, you know, Pete Nelson out of Foster, Minnesota. So he came in, wrote in their programming. So it's, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, it can be any software programmer can, you know, work on their system and, you know, and but, write into it. Now, the question, you know, I guess, is actually getting the physical um, programming. Uh, and I don't, they're called addresses. All the gentlemen, I don't pertain to understand it, but John, what you're saying. You need a list of all those addresses so anybody can come in and work on it. And that is one of the items that, you know, I've got before on uh, greater construction, just along with the as-built drawings from Mr. Sparvey. I guess the bottom line is, I know that I read in the spec that, that we should have the level of instrumentation, uh, telemetry, whatever, automation, at least what we had before the project. Well, I, and I guess, plus some other things. Yeah, you've got considerably more than what yes, you know, that was well, there. Well, but I mean, we can, we'll be able to operate uh, the same valves, like if there's the same valve or a pump someplace at the same level, we'll be able to operate that stuff at the same level. Yep, well, the last one we have here, you know, is that might pass out with the full equalization. Yeah, process. and that's the last one remotely or whatever that yeah. we can have to get fixed. Uh, um, in order to get up to that same level we were That's before. That's correct. And this, we're talking about cell phone uh, service. So do all the plant operators have good service where they live so they can get it from their home? Well, a couple of us have the boosters, okay. which we need, okay. including myself. Otherwise, I don't get good service. And neither does Jeff. I know that. But he's got a booster, which helps. Mm -hmm. huh? Tom, yeah. Tom, yeah. Tom, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And do you have anything else, Mark? No, or thank you, gentlemen. Any more questions for Mark before he goes up? Uh, oh, Doug. Mark, during the, during the uh, mediation process, we held back sufficient funds from Gritter to cover all this punchless items, correct? Well, yes, you held $75,000 is the figure that you held. Yep. Right. And wasn't the agreement that they had to complete the punch list items before we were going to release that $75,000? I, I, I don't want to work for word, but I'll agree that the, I believe the way Joe Boyle phrased it in that mediation agreement is that, you know, rather than follow the general conditions as punch list item was completed, there could be partial releases. I believe that's the way your, you know, your legal counsel worded it is that, you know, they were going to complete everything before you were going to release the retainage. And that was based on the board's adamant decision. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Chairman, last question. Mark, can release fleens from the subs? We've got an issue there? Yes. Um, I mean, how do we get that rectified? Uh, well, uh, from the standpoint of, uh, for, you know, we'll probably have to contact the Ritter Construction's Searity Company, Chopper, from the no. standpoint, rather than getting, you know, a legal counsel involved, We'll be putting a letter together to a Searity. And what Chopper's referring to, now for two months I've been asking, I think Gritter, you know, we have all the wage interviews from, you know, I think we have 13 subcontractors they had on site, plus you have your major equipment suppliers. And I'll, you know, I'll use Northland Painting as an example. I've asked for release of reliefs, which, you know, that you want in fact, so that after you're done and you pay off, you don't get XYZ from Bloomington, Illinois coming in and saying, we're going to put a $20,000 lien on the project because we didn't get paid for, you know, product A, B, C. Um, but right now, uh, like I say, I have not been provided any release of liens 
nor I don't believe that you know they've sent any up here to you or I'm seeing say, but no, we know they're not we don't have any yeah so and, and I'll offer from the standpoint of uh, greater construction is still I'll like better words licking their wounds they are rather upset that uh, this board took them uh, amazing for you know mediation and I know uh, through the grapevine I'll say that he's trying to pass on some of those costs to some of his subcontractors and they're taking issue with it so um, even though it's over I'll say it's not over and it may still get a little bit messy and you're probably gonna have to bring his surety in before <coughs> just to make sure he gets all this up now I'm not aware of any I'll say a large six-figure number out there that he's dealing with but I know you know some of the subcontractors haven't been paid I'll say seven thousand dollars or thirteen thousand dollars um, because in his mind he's trying to um, but, but they only have 120 days to put that to put a lien on well from the last time they were on they're site they're, they're 120 days they yep. can't put a lien on that. so now what what's our next move then what's and then what's our liability in this yeah what is the time like for once we go to the surgery they're going to handle it then right well, well, they'll assist. I mean, from the standpoint, you know, they're going to come back because they don't want this, you know, because he'll have to maintain his, you know, his performance, you know, his right. performance bond uh, and payment bond on this. So that's an extend his payment on that. So I guess, you know, Chopper, that's what I'll offer from the standpoint of going to the surety and, you know, letting them, you know, and you know, I say it's not, I say I'm only aware of two subcontractors that greater construction is in a like a better boxing match with on this project mm -hmm. as far as you know a lot of the major equipment suppliers you know they've been paid a long time ago yeah steve um robert mentioned the 120 days is that after completion of the project no, or is that individual the, the last time they worked here the contractors last yep. day here that's okay. you know when they were here the last time they were on site you know doing work but who <clears throat> but who would want it to, you know if they they execute their lien they got to buy this place. You know what good is it doing? What What's our next move then? Well, I'll offer from the standpoint uh, with you know, just in you know, informing both Critter Construction and their surety that you know we've been requesting these since you know July, and uh, you know we're planning on completing everything this fall. So we would like you to you know, as part of that final payment application, we need to have the release of leads in. From the various equipment suppliers and stuff, um, so you know we have to write a letter then, or what? Yeah, just a letter, and like you say, but this would go to their surety for their performance and materials bonds that we would copy. Their surety, their in other words, their bonding company. Yes. And it goes. We write a letter to their bonding company, requesting requ uh, release of liens. Well, requesting their assistance to get their general contractor. Otherwise, we're not going to close out the project, and you know, and this their their bond. For this $12 million plus, it's going to sit active on the books, and that's an expense for them and greater construction. So they're going to want to see that they get it cleaned up and, you know, their eye dotted and their T crossed for closing out this project. Well, uh, okay. is that just something administratively done, or does the board have to act on that? You have. This should be done legally. Sorry. I mean, this should be done by a lawyer. Exactly. So we have to hire a lawyer? Yeah, you want, you, you want to make sure you, you, you do it right. Well, from the standpoint of drafting a letter, I would offer that it should be reviewed by a view. Since you went through a mediation process, it probably should be reviewed by an attorney just to make sure there's no conflicts or anything we're doing with whatever was put in place on your previous mediation agreement. I agree with Chopper from that standpoint. I mean, you don't want to open a, an avenue or something that uh, was already you know, agreed upon. Okay, I think we kind of agreed that uh, um I don't know if this would be the right time to request a motion for this. Uh, does anybody know? During the March presentation, it should get on the agenda that we should. Uh, this is extremely important. Is this lien revision? Yeah, right. I mean, it does sound like it. I, I, I'm so I, I'm gonna lend a little, just a little bit. I I know that there's a great dislike for the man uh, Boyle, but he knows this, and he could he could clean this up very quickly. Yeah, yeah, and I think what that we in said that we would time. request his service, um, the board would have to approve the request. So can we get that on next month's agenda? Absolutely. Is that soon enough? Um, to, uh, and then we'll approve or disapprove at that time? 
but okay. I, mean, I can go through and you know, with I and staff can draft the letter and have it, you know, ready. So that you know, from the standpoint of you know, then that, that, that's how you want to proceed. We can then. Okay, we'll do that for sure. On uh, put John, that on the agenda. I need, I need a motion though because John. you guys have told me that Mr. Boyle would only be on if, if at all would be on a, a, an ask <coughs> basis. But I, again, he knows the history. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's that's right. Uh -huh. um, but we have to do that now. Do we have to do that today? Yeah. Oh, right now. Uh, he was present through all of the negotiations. Yeah. Um, with Mr. Gritter and his attorney, so there shouldn't be any problem getting uh, this information from Joe Boyle without spending another right exactly. Bunch and, of and, money. But I I'm looking for the appropriate time to make to have somebody make a motion. And I'm wondering if this is appropriate time right now there when we're having the discussion. There will be a cost, but not much. I don't yeah, know. no, yeah. I, well, but you should motion then for, to have Mr. Boyle. Okay, let's do that right now then, if somebody wants to make that motion. To write a letter to whoever, however certain. Yeah. Um, or you know, both, it, you know, it needs to be the Gritter Construction and Gritter Construction Security Company. Yeah, oh. whatever, wherever he has to go. Uh, yeah, I'll you want to make that, that motion, motion then? or I bet you. I yeah, sure right. will. He has to yeah, write a right. letter no, no. to whoever. That, uh, um, Mark and Chop, the district, are going to prepare the letter. Well, Joe we'll, is going to sign it. We go we'll, we'll, we'll draft. We need to draft and do the preliminary yeah. draft. And Mr. Boyle will be you know, he'll, he'll responsible for the final. Okay, but right. we'll oh, have okay. to have a second before we uh, discuss any further. Second. Uh, okay, Mike said. All through this whole whole process, Mark and I have gone back and draft, 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 and then we sent it to Joe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, comments? We'll do that right now. Then, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, no. Let's get back to Mark. I, you know, is there any anything? There's a couple piping problems, and, uh, pump problems there. Big, these are big, major problems too. Um, the one is about the recirculation pump. P two. And the other one is about um, possibly an undersized. Uh, section of pipe that's maybe causing a backup in the system during heavy flows. Now, um, is there any, has there been any progress on the recirculation pump dropouts? When it quits and it has to be reset manually. Manually, yep. I mean, from the standpoint of, we're gonna look at two things as far as, you know, I sold my truck, um, the, you know, taking the screen off, you know, spoke with John Harrison on this, either taking the screen off or doing that, and then we have, we added that spring in there, and do we, it's a 10 inch pipe, and for the MPCA, John, 10 state standards, you know, this thing was sized like it was in the 50s to do a great range, but essentially staff is running it down at 250 gallons per minute. They don't do much greater than that, so what I have, have to look at is a, you know, a valve size and a spring size on this foot valve that'll keep it, you know, from closing and operating, and, and, and like you say, intermittently dropping pump T P two out. Yeah. All right. As far as last month when I reported, we're likely going to have to look at putting a one-way check valve on the overflow from what they call the station number two or pumps B thirty eight thirty that pump up to the filter building. So when we are using two pumps and pumping up, you know, four four point two MGD when it comes back down to the hill. You know, it'll all go through the chlorine contact tank and we won't get a reverse flowing back up into the station number two. Because like I say there's, you know, we kept that 12 inch, I've, I've got about three foot of driving head difference. I need, you know, I would have had to create everything three feet higher in the air, but we have this set hydraulic profile. So I'll offer, yes, I need to, I mean, as I reported last month and talked to staff, we are going to have to look at putting some type of check valve on that lift station too. Okay. And this is at our cost. This is a district. This is not part of the original project. This Neither really one of these is, and so that will have to come. You know, we will have to pay for that. Uh, yep. The district. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'll offer. I think it's a ten inch. You know, the uh, the type of valve I'm looking at is probably you know, you know, some somewhere. I'll say in the fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollar cost for that type of valve. Okay. Hey, could we get an update on those costs uh, as soon as you can come up with some engineering on it and, and, and installation stuff like that? Okay. Approximation, if you could, yeah. for both of those projects. 
And what can the staff install that check valve? I'd have to, I mean, for this, the answer to that question would be yes. But I mean, I, you know, as far as, you know, does something need to be ground off on the wall sleeve that's coming through? Understand. I, I can't tell you from the standpoint, or, you know, it, it, I'll offer it may be more prudent to have someone like Helen, who's got the equipment, you know, so, you know, they can do it in a half hour and not take four and a half hours doing it because they have the equipment on the truck. Okay, any other questions for Mark then? Okay. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Okay, let's go to the uh, next on the agenda is disbursements. <coughs> August disbursements for. And you'll have your addition from Master, Mr. Chairman. Of course, if uh, you can authorize uh, uh, disbursements and get something out at your discretion. So that would be uh, 60,000. Let's see, I'm sorry. Okay, is there any questions on the disbursements other than the, the Messer, which we're going to add in here someplace? Under the M's, maybe, huh? Mr. Chair? Yeah, go ahead. So I'll move approval of the disbursements. Uh, with a total of sixty-three thousand eight forty-nine ninety-two, which includes message. Is your second? I'll second. Motion second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I see on communication that uh, choppers. Was up to two forty this month compared to hundred dollars HRA. Uh, she the uh, QuickBooks combines those. Oh, that she did that she, that one right under communication. She yeah. just put it right with that. No, like it's they're coded, but only one code comes up. Like it was coded one hundred under HRA, one forty under communication. But when it kicks it out in the report, it only puts a one. <coughs> if we went and looked at it in QuickBooks, it would be separated under the proper account. Um, yeah. On an HRA, they, the employees are allowed $100 a month, and they can withdraw more than that no. a month? Well, if they have a bank. You have a bank. Yeah. Okay. If, you, if you only have $100, you're not going to get 150 plan. Yeah. It happened to me this, this month. Could we have, uh, maybe we should get a periodic report of the uh, HRA fund? What goes in and what comes out? So they're allowed. Are, are there positive? I don't know if there's positive balance. Uh, uh, uh. I put one hundred dollars at the first of every month into everyone's HRA. If they were overtime over their twenty-four hours, it gets put into their HRA as well. So it could be another eighty dollars, another two hundred dollars that would go into that specific employee's HRA, depending on if they had overtime above and beyond 24 hours. This, this, these funds have to be used up each year or they carry over? They carry, they carry over. over. Up to a maximum they unlimited? Maximum. Hmm. Um, well, I, I didn't tell you the truth, I didn't know about that uh, overtime going into the HRA. I, I don't know when that was done. That was I also thought the max was 6,000. I don't believe that 60 that months at 100 there. bucks is 6,000. I thought it was that too. Thought we looked at that and it was not. Yeah, it was. I think we better have a discussion on this. Yeah. Uh, can we uh, put that on next month's agenda? H uh, uh, discussion of HRA. Um, With the balance? Hmm? The current balances? Yeah, the rules yeah. and regulations. For current balances and, and maybe just a short uh, statement of uh, you know, how the pro program works. Um, we got a motion second. I, I mean, I am concerned about the mess, sir. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of opposed to it. I, I, I don't. It's a lot of money for. We may be getting the services, but we're. I think we're going to be faced with a financial crunch. I, I, I'm not quite sure whether. Maybe we should drop out of this thing for the next following year. Yeah. What, what kind of services do they give us on, say, an annual type basis? What, what are they. We're involved in any lawsuit or any type of. Uh, they, they file on behalf of not so much us, but the one thing they did help us with uh, when we were arguing the 2000 
uh, seven to 2012 permit, they got the phosphorus and nitrogen delay, or phosphorus and mercury delayed for us in particular. When they, a lot uh, of work they do like Lake Pepin and the Mississippi River and stuff does deal with us. Right now they're fighting the nitrogen rules. Do they assess us when they do work for us specifically? Do they don't charge us for that either? No. Uh, okay. Have they ever done anything specifically for North Cook? Yeah, that's they helped me delay the five-year permit. Otherwise, in 2007, by 2009, that plant would have had been built. Somebody else might. So what our cost is twenty-eight hundred and sixty-one dollars. Yes. That's what our cost is annually. Yes. Well, it yeah, it expired last June, so we wouldn't. It's just we just received the delinquent there are, now. There, there are lawyers. Last last month, you authorized getting involved the class action against the flushable wipes. And that's sort of thing. Well. How long have we been a member of us? Long as I was here for a long time. Okay. Seems like an awful lot of money. Yeah, I, you know what? It, it, you know, to me, it's some questionable value to us, to tell you the truth. I mean, if we were flush, I would say, you know, prove it. Well, I, I think I, I would vote no on this one. I guess the goal of reducing the overall budget is to reduce what's charged to the entities and the individual residents. Um, and I don't know how that's ever going to happen. I mean, we can nitpick, we can bring our budget down to nothing, but are we still going to, is the end result going to result in then savings to the entities or? <coughs> you know, a couple of $2,800 here, $2,800 there. Do we leave this up to the budget committee and let them go? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I, don't, I, I, mean, I, I think that we should take care of this right now, or unless you want to... Um, I see it had a date when it has to be paid. Today. Today? Oh. Yeah. Well, they'll take our money if we decide to. <laughs> decide to you know. I don't think they'll have a penalty. Uh, well, we've got motion and second, and I've got. Yeah, I, have a, I have a question. If if someone downstream down the river decided to say your quality of discharge is not sufficient for us, who would represent us? This company or the MPCA? This company. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and by the way, the Lake of the Woods and the IJC have subtly uh, commended the district for uh, diligently uh, doing as much as they could to reduce the phosphorus level going into Lake of the Woods. The only point source has done anything. So. Another another question: the buffer strips and. Regulation of mining activities. Are they for or against all of the mining activities in northern Minnesota? For, they're, for they're for mining. They're for mining. Uh, in an environmental situation, mm -hmm. as good as possible. Well. Mm -hmm. Do we know how many communities are members? Or? City, Mr. Mayor, is the city member of Messer? No. Are you a member of, uh, does, uh, the law firm? Flaherty and Hood? Yeah. No. No more no. The, through the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities, this, the city is a member. And they're a but, lobby for, but, for them? But the, uh, League of Minnesota Cities and the Coalition are the only two members. I, I think the League of Minnesota, well, they, they do the if I'm not mistaken, the League would probably 
um, we could request the League of Minnesota City to represent us. Master was set up mostly as an environmental review. So, um, I don't know. I'm going to vote no. So, but, <laughs> <laughs> are, are they are they mostly are they a, uh, are they a lobbying lobbying group yep. lobbying and they go to court a lot. The League of Minnesota Cities is not going to cover the district if we have an argument on on on, on uh, emissions or a point uh, issues regarding nitrogen or sulfur or cyanide or metals in the future. It's going to be somebody like them that are going to go to court. League of Minnesota Cities works on an adverse legal field only. They do not act as a plaintiff's attorney, per se. Usually when someone, one of their members is in trouble. Well, and, and fighting a permit probably is not going to be their forte. But it's up to you. Is this my like first time we've seen this? You've dealt with Messer before, Mike. Yeah, we've been a member for, I mean, we got along without him before, but uh, I, I don't know, we've been a member maybe eight years or something like that. Member Messer? Yeah. Oh, before I Ten came. years. I think it was a year before I came on or two. I think Tom was, Tom was junior director. What would you protect the district against? <laughs> well, again, they helped. I was arguing the fact about we couldn't do anything about phosphorus and mercury. And so they bought in with us because the background mercury was 6.9 nanoliters per nanograms. nanograms. And, and also the phosphorus was impossible for our plant to, to remove. And so they went and got a delay from the MPCA for us to be addressed in the 2012 permit which gave us to 2014 to have a treatment situation in place to bring phosphorus below one and uh, mercury way below the uh, back background. And uh, so that's, that's what happened. But they didn't change anything. We still had to Well, you had a delay, you had a delay in, 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 in charging your customers more through debt service. Uh, Steve? Where do they get the number of the figure for the number of accounts, 3,366 accounts times $0.85 cents per account. Is that just what the city bills? To $0.85 the cents per wastewater building account, I'm sure it's by the gallon. I'm not sure if it hurts me. It says 3,366 billing accounts. Those are probably members, I'm reckoning. No, that's what that's no, what that's, that's the it. amount of money that they're charging us, eighty five cents per billing account. That's where they get the total of twenty eight sixty one ten. So is that our the three thousand three hundred and sixty six billing accounts, is that how many accounts yeah. we have within our district or yeah, that's, what they're saying. that's what they're basing it on international falls residents. ERUs and, and East Cooch ERUs. That's so that's the whole district, yeah. East Cooch included, okay. Um, okay, we got a uh, uh, motion and second on the floor to approve the disbursements including the Messer bill. Uh, are you ready to vote? Steve? No. Yes. No. 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 Yes. No. Is that uh, two yeses? And that the no's are to just delete Messer. Otherwise, the disbursements. Uh, that was to um, uh, the the original motion was to include Messer in the bill, and so we defeated the original motion, and so uh, we got to have another motion to yes. to uh, approve the disbursements as. Is on our uh, our pa in our packet here. So um, we need a motion for that. All right, Steve, you're gonna. Blair, I'll make a motion to approve the disbursements in our package, with the exception of Messer. 
I'll second. I have a Fair. question. We have Any no discussion. We have no blanket authorizations this month. Okay. All right. Is it both then? Tom, we have questions. We have no. No. No blanket okay. authorization. The motion. What is it? The motion is to approve the disbursements as originally reported in, in, in their packet. The, the 60000 Excluding? That's number one. 61000 60988 yeah. 60, yeah. 60, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I, you know, and we have to figure out why Chopper's um, communication allowance and HRA weren't singled out, because Tommy's are. Because I put them all the same. I entered them at the okay. same time. Okay. <coughs> Alright then. We can vote? Aye. 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 I vote yes. 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 Motion carried unanimously. You have your finance. Finan uh, yeah, next is the uh, financial reports. The uh, three different reports apparently compromised, uh, comprise the. They already do uh, support each other. Yeah. You can see our flows are down considerably from last year. Our income flows. Our expenses are uh, down a bit. And they can be worked out a bit more. So, and then we'll be discussing doing the budget in a bit. I'm sure the city and Rainier and are anxious to, and probably Teresa Briggs is anxious to get the, the budget. Um, okay, uh, do we have a motion to approve the financial reports? Uh, so move. Second. Okay, motion. A second. Any questions? I, I, I mean, I've got one. I don't know if it'd be physically possible to, um, or electronically possible to consolidate these first two reports. Is that you know? Okay. They are separate in the book. I don't. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there is, you know, some going back and forth, the uh, comparison and uh, budget amounts and uh, budgeted amounts and that stuff like that. But I guess we'll just have to live with that. Uh, yeah, my that sludge truck. Are we still using that? We may eventually. We haven't put a lot of work into it, but we haven't used it for a while. Why would we carry? Why wouldn't we just carry like comprehensive or something on it? Why would we insure it all the way if we're not using it? Um, you know, it's, it can leave that garage at any time. Yeah, you know. Okay. All right. I believe we have a motion and second on this. Mm-hmm. Don and Doug. Who? Hmm? Don and Doug. Yeah, Don and Steve, you ready to vote? Aye. 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 I vote yes. 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 Motion carried unanimously. Okay, old business. Uh, nothing from Pellin Swenson. No. Uh, Where are we today? Visited, visited the office was closed and then I. Of course, you started notice today, but he was down the hole. I'm not going to bother contractor working, and I'm not going down the hole. So. No. Uh, did we pay that bill? No. No. So, huh. okay. And we did, you and I did write a letter to him, too. Yeah, you get yeah. yeah, right. There was a letter written to him. If you want to get paid, you can. All right. Uh, table board adoption bylaws. Uh, oh, wait a minute now. Did you? Do we need a motion to include it on next month's agenda again? 
it's still tabled. You can just the chairman. You guys can just I think just what will remain will stay on the table for now. Okay. What's that? The Pellin bill will just stay on the table for now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, table board adoption of bylaws. Now, uh, do we want to take that up? Okay. Uh, Don, uh, go ahead. Since our, uh, I think every member received a, a letter from our illustri the illustrious mayor of International Falls concerning my motion last meeting, uh, I would just like to bring up to this board information that when North Cooch Sanitary Sewer District was formed by the state of Minnesota as a separate identity. At that time, South Falls had two board members. International Falls had four board members. East Cooch had one board member. And Rainier had one board member. If you look at that, you would see that the state of Minnesota realized that in making this identity, the North Cooch Sewer District, that there was no one organization that had control of that organization. When South Falls pulled out or dis consolidated. This yeah. The two board members that South Falls had went to International Falls by what reason, I don't know. At that time, the legislature should have changed or the, the, the board, the North Cooch board, should have went to the legislators and had them change so that no one identity would have control of this organization or this political organization. And now we're sitting where one identity has control of North Cooch Sanitary Sewer District. And I don't think the state of Minnesota would go along with that. Um, Mr. Smith, can I interrupt real quick? Uh, what? I mean, Mr. No, I have to, I have to, Steve. Mr. Chairman, can we put this pre discussion on opinion from LMC regarding board members? Otherwise, somebody's going to have to make a motion. On table list. Because this discussion is regarding table board adoption of bylaws. We can't be talking about well, this until we end table. Right. Okay? So if you, you want to move this discussion down to the fourth item, opinion from LMC, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I think that sounds like. Um, uh, yeah, there was no uh, motion to untable that, right? I mean, and then, so, then, then Don can continue the discussion, discussion but yeah. should not deal with it. Yeah. So can we just forget about this uh, discussion and move down to uh, uh, the, the opinion from the League of Minnesota Cities? That's where this discussion should belong. Is that the one? Huh? That's, where, that's where Don's discussion should belong right now. Yeah, okay, Don. I. You're changing the agenda then? Well, you're just skipping down to four because that's what your your your, your discussion right now. Well, it, it, the agenda calls for the table board adoption of bylaws. Okay, and then we do need a motion on table for discussion. Yeah, we have to see. It. And I didn't mean to inter interrupt you, but it gets a little hairy. You can get a little hairy. What's that? It can get a little hairy if you discuss stuff that. Are yeah, yeah, I think well, so. I mean, we've been table. we've been, yeah, pretty observant of this tabling business before, so I think we better. Do it now. I mean, I think that the motion should be to take this, uh, bring it back on. I was told you know. to remove from the table. You make the motion. I made the motion. Okay. Yeah, we have a second. We're getting me angry here. <laughs> second, no, second. You said Robert seconds it. Now we have a a motion. All right, we have a motion second. Yeah. Um, no discussion. We need a vote. No. Yes. What? what is the motion about? What's the motion? To remove from table the bylaws. Uh, you know, it's a parliamentary procedure. Okay. You can't just, uh, right. you know, I guess. So just go and on. so we have a vote of yes. No. Or you have a vote of no. Yes. A uh, yes. No. A no. No. Yes. A no. A yes. yes. 
and a yes. So okay, uh, no. Four to three. Yes. What was it? Four to three. Yes. Yes. In favor. Yes. yes. In favor. Four to three. So it's removed from the table. To remove from the table. Now okay. Don can. Okay, Don. And you heard my. I'm not going to repeat it. You, okay. Everybody heard it. It's. Uh, I'm sure that the state legislature, if they were approached and looked at this, that they would say yes, that the legislation creating the North Cooch Sanitary Sewer District should be changed and in their way should set up a non-partial board. Uh, Steve. Uh, Don's argument is that one entity has control now. Uh, it is North Cooch is in the city of International Falls. And even if we added another member to East Cooch, it's not going to change whether this entity has control or not. I mean, the, the membership is still going to be stacked in favor of the user that's paying 90% of the effluent. And I'm sure paid. that if we contacted our legislatures that they would change everything. They're not stupid. I mean, these people are... <laughs> that's the way the board was set up. It's Who are you calling stupid? <laughs> Who am I calling I'll, stupid? I'll explain something. I would call, if blame has to be put, I would put it on when South Falls... Okay, okay. Uh, suggestion. If you eliminated South Falls, that's two votes. If South Falls didn't exist, International Falls would have four votes. East Cooch would have one and Rainier would have one. It wouldn't change. I'm not saying that it would be that way. They would look at no, it like organization. We, no. Can I? Why would we give you one and take two away and give you one? I made my point. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. argue yeah, with I, you. Okay, Doug, go ahead. Well, I guess my recollection, and it was before my time, but I would think that when South International and International Falls combined to make one city, that was when the two representatives from South Falls started representing the city as a whole. I'm assuming that's the way it happened. It was an agreement yeah. in the consolidation. Right, that, that's but what the, their thinking was. I'll okay. tell you what, how the initial <coughs> enabling legislation went. And it's pretty much boilerplate. Every time the state forms a water district or sewer district, Don is right, is that they set it up so that one entity, be it a city, township, whatever, does not have a voting majority on the board. Now, you, you, you can argue with that, whether that's a good thing or bad thing. Uh, and you can argue whether the legislature would do anything about what we got right now. I don't know. But when, okay, when one city, uh, okay, and then it further the, the, the initial enabling legislation as presented before it got marked up in the Senate, uh, said that if any one entity drops out, in this instance it would have been paper makers. City of International Falls would have lost three members, or would have lost one member. So that International Falls would have been down to three, South Falls would have been down to two, and Rainier would still have one, uh, and East Coach would be one. So it would be oh, seven yeah. members. Back then there was nine members, and because paper makers didn't get in, they reduced it to eight. South Falls got two, Rainier got one, East Cooch got one, International Falls got four. But don't, it, don't include paper makers in International no, Falls. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, David, and I know this is true, because it spells it right out in there that if any one entity drops out, because at the time paper makers was iffy, no, it and dropped then, from nine. Then International Falls would have lost one. That no, three. no, no. It dropped from nine to eight. International Falls didn't lose anything. Don't say that, John. No. The ninth one was paper makers. But they should have. 
They should have been Why should International Falls lose them? Because they had four before. No, no, I'm just saying this was, no, uh, the thing is the initial bill I'm talking yeah, by the bill bill writers. I've read it two or three times. Yeah, but you don't have the probably the the. I've got it at home. I don't have it with me. No, no, you've got. And I will bring it back and show you. Uh, I got. Papermakers had one. International Falls had four. Well, South International Falls had two. Rainier had one, and East Coos had one. I'm, so why uh, should International Falls lose yeah, yeah, one? Yeah. I, I'm just telling you the history of this thing, and that was the original enabling legislation. And then it got marked up in the House, and then the Senate final bill was a Senate bill, I believe. And uh, then it came out that it was four, came out four, two, one, and one. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman, you're, you're all right, but John, John does have a point there, and him and I have argued about it and talked about it many times in the past that historically these districts like the city of Duluth will have on a 12 member board they'll have um, five members and Proctor will have a member, Hermantown will have a member, so and so and they set that up so one entity does not have a total control. They have more than each one of the others but they wouldn't have control of that said board if everyone is in attendance and that was the intent back then but it didn't happen here because that assimilation happened, and I don't know. <coughs> uh, it, it is a force of law right now. The four, International Falls four, um, South Falls two, and Rainier and East Cooch have one each. That's, that's in the law. That's the law right now. It's whether you want to change the law. So the charter has to be changed. The legislative change. Well, our bylaws have to be changed. Yeah, Doug, go ahead. I, do we <clears throat> do we have the ability and the authority to change that at this table? No, no. no. That was the discussion with League of Minnesota City's opinion. Then let's now now let's move on. Now let's move on. I we think can. this is going to we turn can. out to be a political. Yeah. If it I, is, it is. It is I make a motion not not to leave it as is and not to proceed with any special legislation. Uh, <laughs> Your motion is to adopt the bylaws. I leave the same. Yeah, That's basically what it is. Yeah. Huh? With regard to membership, yes. Well, you're adopting no, bylaws. I'm, let's, I'm, we, I let's, don't have the adopt. bylaws in front of me. I don't yeah, know. Uh, uh, we were about ready to adopt them the last time, and then this. This is thing. all. That, this is um, all me. Um, so, is, we have a motion to adopt the bylaws, or no? No, my motion was not to proceed with changing the membership. Well, you can uh, to adopt the bylaws. bylaws. The bylaws are set up the way they are now. Six, one, and one. That's one way yeah. you could do with your motion. I make a motion we adopt the bylaws. Okay. We got a motion. We have a second. Question. What bylaws are we adopting? We've already got bylaws. No, no. That David, uh, uh, no, we don't have a second. We don't have a second. Can we get a second and then have the discussion? You're going to adopt the existing bylaws. The ones that were presented to us. Um, I mean, we have bylaws. Now we're going to make another motion to adopt the existing bylaws. We don't know whether we have. Which well, bylaws? No. I'll, I'll second Mike's motion so we okay. can talk yeah, about our, this. Yeah, now we now we can talk about it. But the way I understand it, David, we brought this up as an issue a while back, and there was discussion about the bylaws. We tabled it until everybody got a copy of the bylaws, had a chance to read them over, and had a chance to bring up any questions they may have regarding the bylaws. And we made the statement, in fact, I made the statement that said, if we're going to adopt bylaws, it should be the bylaws that are in front of us, not some something that somebody else has in a book hidden away someplace it's the ones we have in front of us that was the last that. you just got a copy didn't you well yeah, yeah we, got, we all got a copy of it in the day yeah. i kind well, of just well, started I mean, if they're the ones you're talking about i understand i'll go along but we've already got them but we what we did we brought it up and said okay we need to 
look at our bylaws and adopt them as written, the ones that were handed out to us. And, and, and then we tabled that until everybody had a chance to I read mean, it. Okay, I see what you're saying. And now... No, I, I don't need that. I've got it. What I'm, all I'm trying to clear up is these bylaws mm -hmm. that right here are identical to the ones that are in that book and all. Identical. Uh, uh, David, there, there are some other ones out there that have not been destroyed, have not been taken out, and there had been some confusion as to which ones were the official ones. And legally, this was very, very important, I think, that we adopt something and we read it we uh, it's not significantly different than uh, it is not it's no different that's but exactly. all I'm and all I'm saying and I want to make it perfectly clear is if we vote to adopt these bylaws that if somebody else has something in a book someplace and says hey what about this it's null and void it's gone these are the bylaws period and I would add that we identify those, if we can, identify the date approved and you know, distinguish them from anything else that we got. Okay. Why do you have the and, and we talked about that. Yeah. We said if somebody else has something else, bring it to the board, and I don't see it. I don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we, but destroy everything else. Uh, yeah. Gone. Why don't you guys accept we will, in the file. we will put the chairman and the secretary will sign it. But what I would like us to do, if you're insisting on these bylaws, I would like us, eight members, to sit down here and read them so we all are on the same page. Period. You, you, you talk about something that existed in my little blue book and you doubt it. And for that, I want everybody to understand what's in my blue book compared to your blue book. That's all I want. That's fine. And at that point in time, I'll vote on it. But up until then, I see no reason to vote on it. Because all of the bylaws that I have read and seen that we have violated. And I am the one that brought it to the board's attention. Okay, then. That's all I'm saying. I mean, yeah. we accepted them then. And... I don't know why we have to go through all of this political maneuvering to do it again. We've already done it. Well, the we have. I've got to sign. Yeah. Well, then, if there's other things other than this, then I'll say, please bring them to the board I'll so bring we can next look meeting. at the. I'll bring thank, them. All I don't want. I don't want to vote on it today. Period. I'm That's ahead. fine. That's fine. We can table. We can table the motion until next meeting. Okay. But um, just I don't know. If, uh, you have a motion and second. They can remove their motion and second if you want to drop this for now. I will remove my second. I'm not going to remove my first my motion. No. I I I've read these over and looked at the other ones, and I think these are just fine. Are they different than the other ones? I can't remember it off the okay. top of my head. Oh, it, but okay. I read on these um, here. Okay. Uh, what's, just, what's, just what's, what's the difference? Just put is there a second? Is there a <coughs> motion? I, I, is this the right parliamentary the way to go about it? The cleanest way to do it is the second motion maker remove your action. Oh, oh second. Remove it. We have a second. Robert, second. Okay. Okay. No. What is it, Don? What is it? I don't know what we're voting. Well, they're voting on the bylaws. And on your Don, motion. Don has information no, that he wants to present. No, you removed your second. And Robert seconded. Oh, yes. Robert? Oh, I just want to do look at the bylaws next month so I have any something without arguing about it. Yeah. No. We're trying to adopt them so now. So the motion is what? To approve it's them now. Mike, was your motion to adopt them now or next month? My motion is to adopt them now. Okay. Okay. And, and Robert's second is to do it next month. <laughs> no, no, that's no. What's confusing. I don't think. No, there's no. There was no motion to look is, at. We, is there a parliamentarian in so, the house? So we don't have a second to Mike. So no. we're right. We? No, and I was calling for second. And there's no second. The motion. Is there failed. a second? The motion failed. Is there a second? No. Second's been called for three times. Uh, failure for lack of second. Failure of the motion for lack of second. I'll make a motion to address this at the next meeting. You can just lay it 
for now, and then we'll John put it on the agenda. Yeah, that's easier. Is it second to that motion? Well, yeah, are we allowed to we do don't it? Need that we don't need a motion. Oh. We just need to get it on the agenda that we're right. going to take a look at all, all right. the bylaws yeah. okay. and vote on them our next meeting. Okay, let's get on to some lift things. Hmm? All right. The, uh, do we have to talk about the LMC letter? No. We've already. Uh, it's kind of a moot point right now, I believe. Yeah. No. Well, we should read it. It's there. I'd like to hear it. It's, it's information that says you can change the formula and the language of the Indian legislature. Could I see it? Could I no. read it? I, don't, I, don't I, sent the, I sent the email to Tyler. Talking about this letter from the uh, possible. Yeah, from Laura Ziegler? Yeah. No, I don't I think you have it in your packet, Dave. Talk to Chris Johnson after and she she said yes it can be done. You'd have to go to the box and, and unfortunately they the bill's gone. So whoever sits in that chair, they can initiate a change and request from the governor for signature and that's how that would be done. Okay. We can't do it. So. You can address that later. But I don't have one. Yeah. Yeah. Can you pass that down? He can stick that on there. Thank you. So now that you have that, do we want to comment on that right now, or do we want to move on? I'll just tell you what you got to do. You can do it. That's what you want to know. Information. Yep. The clock stopped. Hmm. <laughs> I stopped. Uh, But it doesn't say that we can no. change it. No, we can't. No, it's just we can't. Can't. Oh. We got the opinion we uh, want. Okay. Uh, lift station map presentation. Oh, yeah. We gotta go back to that. Mm -hmm. uh, your request, Mr. Chairman, it's over on the wall there. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mark, for helping with that. Very good, good job. And uh, Tommy Gandic, you got it together as good as we could. It identifies uh, you know, Greg, maybe you want to go up there and just if you have any questions where lift station is. If I understand where South Falls 1 and 2 is, and I can kind of show you here. I'll step over here. <clears throat> right in here is Tilson. This starts out in the South Jackfish area, right up here. And this is what we call South, Fall, South Jackfish Lift Station 1 right here. Now, Tilson's right here. We do have a few homes on the other side of the, of the bay here that come into Lift Station 1 over by Kellen Wagner's and Andy Wagner's over there. Them, there's a few houses over there that feed into this lift station here. Also, there's a number of grinders that feed into these main lift stations like that. And then they're pumped along to the, another lift station. This is Jackfish number two, South Jackfish two here on County Road 103, I believe right here. Also, all these homes feed from simplex grinders into main lines that eventually end up in these lift stations. And then they move it on down the line to another lift station. Uh, and like in this area here, there's also still little grinders that push it to the main line. So this is what we call the South Jackfish area right here. North Jackfish, down the Northern Air Road, North Jackfish 1, all kinds of little homes and simplex grinders that feed into the main line that come down the main line to the main lift stations. First lift stations here, North 1. We got North 2. There's also a series of lines and stuff from all these homes up here that feed into the <coughs> stations. Down, this station here would feed right down to here, down here. I can't explain exactly where all the lines run. I mean, we're even learning where all the lines run. We gotta pull out the prints and stuff to see exactly where all the lines are running and all, you know, when we run into those situations. But also in a main lift station here that takes in all the grinders and, and the houses right through here. And then that pushes it through. Eventually, it ends up down to here. 
which is, is uh, almost Lindy's is right here. The detention tank is right here. So all these stations here are eventually pumping to the detention tank. <clears throat> lift station 14 by almost Lindy's. This detention tank pumps into lift station 14 and that starts to bring it. It's moving its way to town down through the Idlewood area here. Clark's Park is lift station 13 through there. And there's a series of lines back through here that end up coming through lift station 11 and then all the way down to 8 by a rig jig down there. And like I say, there is a number of people on gravity lines and there's some grinders involved through here too that eventually bring it all the way down to 8 and then over to 7 which is Rainier Park and then from 7 there's a series of lines we get mainly into gravity then and eventually brings it over to lift station 1 here down by Jack Early's which brings it to the falls. Now if for some reason we get rainstorms in coming or heavy rain predicted what we do here is we got the three-way belt right here so all this flow from East Cooch, Jackfish, East Cooch, Rainier where's the diverter valve right here what we'll do is switch that valve and send everything to the ponds so we got nothing from this area up here going through the three-way valve here coming to the plant why don't you move over to this side so Dave and Mike can see better since you're, since you're working out whatever you want to do Oh, you can see it there. See, that's where the three-way valve is. This is lift station one. That's the main lift station. Everything from Jackfish, East Gooch, Rainier goes through that lift station there. And that's the one where we just put the new 20 horsepower pump in. And we got another one on order for it. And then we'll have a spare pump for that. But, and that's a critical station. Where so, does that one sit, Greg? Right by, right down by Jack Early's. County Road 1. 15 at 116? Okay. Yeah. A dead end. It's a dead end street. Dead Is end, that yeah. where it's all metered? That's where it's metered, yep. That's a main flow meter right there in a meter pit. Like I say, then we usually, it comes to the three way here during normal flow, we'll have that three way valve coming to the plant so it just goes around the pond here and then comes to the plant. But during a rainstorm, we'll switch that valve, which we can do at the plant on the computer or even off our phones through Team Viewer, and uh, divert all the flow to the ponds. Right here, we got the meter house. We discharge water out of the meter house. There's a valve on that, and if, like I say, in a rainstorm or something, we'll shut that off too. So we, do, so nothing from the ponds is discharging to the falls, and nothing from Jackfish East Cooch is coming to the falls. Salt Falls 1, right over here. This is part of the old Salt Falls area, comes into the ponds here. Part of the International Falls goes right to the EQ. Part of the old Salt Falls area comes into the ponds, which is called Salt Falls number 1. There's a meter on that. So International Falls is being built with that meter right there. Now the water coming out of the ponds, that's all deducted through a formula on the billing. So whatever we take out of the ponds, that's deducted from our effluent going through the plant. So there's two lift stations <coughs> in French Edition, right? Uh, well, French... The one above Jacker, that Jacker... Well, lift station one. That's, oh, you want that's our one. main lift station. In, What's the one above it then? That's, okay, this one here, I didn't explain that one. That's the main lift station for uh, Jameson. Okay. Everything's gravity and ends up in lift station three. That's by Baduke Equipment, which is brought across the road there, ends up going through lift station one also. That's for Jameson edition there. Could you could you point out um, like which ones of those are owned by North Kuchiching and which and, and I believe the ones that we maintain we maintain lift station one, North Cooch one, seven and eight are owned by North Cooch. And under the grants, uh, some improvements were made under the North Cooch grant um, or the bonding, uh, the bonding project. Uh, improvements were made to those under the North Cooch. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Plan. Yeah. 
But there's a lot of little lines and stuff and grinders and stuff through it. Well, let's see, this is 11 through the Sunset Idlewood area here, Sunset Cove, a lot of grinders. There's like 65 grinders through this area. And all this up here, there's 260 grinders from these homes that feed into these lines and end up through these lift stations, a series of lines, and that end up working their way down. I, I think the request for this map uh, came from Don after um, I made the request that the board reaffirm the fact that we do own lift stations 8, 7, 1, and South Falls. And South Falls. And South Falls. South Falls 1 and 2. And the reason yeah. for that, there was, all of them are a terminus of a collection system. And all of them are in an intercepted interceptor mode, so I think that's was one of the reasons the engineers said that's who owns those. I mean that we're not a collection functioning unit to retreat. Uh, likewise, we uh, do maintenance uh, for a very good price to East Coach, but for, those are the only lift stations that we own because they are terminus from collection systems. They are also part of the interceptor system. No. I thought I seen two lift stations in, in French edition. Well, well there's, a, there's a duplex grinder station. Yeah. There is another grinder station, but I'm, we're pointing out the main lift stations okay. here. There's a couple more smaller lift stations, like a duplex grinder station that ends up pumping to the main lift stations. Uh, down by Antone's there, there was a there's a uh, a duplex grinder. You got a duplex grinder over here. You yeah, there's some other duplex grinders in there. Okay, those are duplex but, grinders. Okay. Yeah, that's a duplex grinder. We're pointing out the main uh, pump stations. Steve, why is that one at the ponds a TMV? Why isn't that under North Coach? The three-way valve. Yeah, that's just indicating where that's at. Yeah, that's just. We're just that's not a lift station. No, that's oh, not a lift station. It's just a bell. All right. It swings. Um, I'd like to make the suggestion that um, we reaffirm that since lift stations 8, 7, and 1 are owned by the North Kuchiching Area Sanitary District, that um, NKASD pays all bills associated with upkeep, maintenance, and operation of those three lift stations. And we're currently we are, except for the electrical, right? Except for the electrical. Well, you do pay South Falls electrical. You so, don't. You don't pay South Falls electrical. <clears throat> no, we do. We do? Yes, we do. Could, yeah. Okay. Who pays the electrical then? East Coast. East Cooch and then East Cooch and Rainier share seven. Eight is East Cooch, seven shared, one is East Cooch, and South Falls one and two is paid for by the district. I guess I'm not seeing John, um, You're asking that being we maintain them, you also want North Cooch to pay for the electricity. That, that's what I'm asking. If somebody wants to uh, make a motion to that effect, okay. If not, I think it's a, you know, legally it's probably a, a fact. Is that? Well, why, don't, why don't we, North Cooch, take on all of the stations? All of them. International Falls, South International Falls. Carson Luke French Edition, Liberty Edition, all the way up to the end. Why don't North Coach take all the responsibility for all of the listings? Well, I, I think Dave Way was originally set up, and, and I'll use the interceptor um, word again now, is that from the very beginning, this is how it was set up, that if, 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 if it was a main, it was <clears throat> pumped to a main interceptor line, that would be North Coach's ownership. And, you know, it's arbitrary, I guess, what you call a main interceptor. I mean, there are definitions for them. Moved large amounts of water, very few 
individual residential uh, uh, what do you uh, well private service lines whatever are you, are you uh, talking about that North Hood should pay for all the locations out in Jackfish? Well, I mean, the reason I said that is because what uh, effluent runs downhill. And if North Hooch is paying for them lift stations, one, seven, and eight, I believe the numbers were, yeah. uh, I don't see how any effluent from International Falls gets way out there to rain air and then comes back. And we're paying for it. International Falls pays 90% of the costs of North Cooch's sewer bills, maintenance, everything. And so, and International Falls pays 100% of their costs on all of their lift stations, sewer lines, uh, grinders if they have any, they pay it all. They pay the lights, they pay everything. Yeah. And in addition, they're asked to pay 90% of the costs related to one, seven, and eight. I mean, that's all I'm saying. I mean, uh, well, but why, why would you want to <clears throat> charge International Falls more money than they're, when they're paying 90% of it already? I mean, that's the only thing I think, yeah, you know, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I can, well, see, I, I can see here a red back here not too long ago where uh, Rainier managed to pass the expenses and repair of the line that I think runs from one seven or eight to seven, eight to seven, and that's going through rain air. That's pump pumping rain air's effluent onto another lift station that pumps it onto Early's. So why should East Cooch be responsible for that line? That's you know, I can't see why they should be responsible. That, well, it's considered a main interceptor, and that's the North Cooch line. And I understand that, John. I mean, you know, and that water still runs downhill. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I see. I'm not against what you're saying. All I'm saying is, when you look at it, you got to look at both ends of it. Well, you got you to pick up the ones that uh, <coughs> the city to them and the ones the city of international Falls. That's what I just asked. As long as we're going to pick up them, why don't we pick up all from the one over Sherwood and the one over, and one over by McDonald's and all the on the 11th Street. I mean, that's all I'm asking. I mean, that's just, and it's only reasonable that I represent International Falls, that I ask that yeah. question. No, no, North So Cooch you can explain to the people. North Cooch uh, is responsible for uh, a major line, a 30 some inch line down 11th Street at Fairways. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but like I said, you can have a lot of extra employees. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the city of International Falls can lay off all the people they got, and they want to pay the taxes there. So I mean, well, <clears throat> okay. Fact is, you could transfer them right from there. They would only have to change buildings. That's all they'd have to do. Okay. Well, I mean, I was just asking for an agreement that as. It, stands right now uh, I don't know what that is. is that something that pertains that's the East Cooch agreement that East Cooch is paying at those North Cooch bus stations that was made in 84 uh, yeah 94. yeah mm -hmm. what I got says 84 Well, I guess my question was operation. It says O and M operation and maintenance. <clears throat> and I remember there was an issue with the line running from the one by Peterson's over to Rainier, and they had to resize it or re. If something happened to that line, who would be responsible for it? Uh, yeah, that had to be moved because it was a. Uh, it was running. That's my only question. I mean, operation maintenance. Does that does that mean relocating lines and everything? Because that could get kind of spendy. <coughs> I mean, it's it's. <laughs> I don't know why we're fixing something. Anybody? Any other comments on this? I just made a comment. Well, if anybody wants. The only thing I see by changing anything in the way things are operating right now, 
is so the city of Rainier can get out from paying an electric bill, bill to operate the list stations located within Rainier and pass that on to the city of International Falls. It's the only thing I'm seeing. Well, you know, don't... Okay, there's a couple lift stations that handles nothing but International Falls uh, wastewater. Lift stations, South Falls lift stations one and two. The entire sewer district's paying for that too. So Rainier's paying for that. I just want some consistency. I, I you know, uh, the money isn't big, I guess, but it's just uh, consistency. And I, I just don't see the sense in it, in the way it's done with uh, uh, East Cooch paying for electricity uh, for uh, eight, seven, and one, and then Rainier reimbursing them for all these percentages and all this stuff. I mean, not only it's a kind of unfair situation; it's just a bookkeeping nightmare. I mean, so, you know, I, I don't think Rainier is trying to gain an advantage. Rainier is just trying to, you know, be treated consistently with everybody else. Uh, and I, as far as Rainier goes, all they have to do is 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 tell uh, East Cooch that they don't want to pay that portion of the bill and let East Cooch buy it. Off. I am. This was discussed, I think, fully back in '84 and '80. 1984 and again in 1995 and it's been working ever since uh, well, I, you know, I just, I, I just I came upon this one. here I just found out about this uh, uh, a few months ago about six months ago now and I've been trying to bring it up and I guess it's been shot down every time but uh, you know it doesn't matter when it was passed I mean if it was not the right thing to do at the time I think you should try to fix it that's all. You know? Well, I think I that should be discussed between Rainier and East Cooch and North Cooch and anything to do with the electrical bill. Let the two, you let you guys figure it out. Leave North Cooch out of it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, I just just a matter of courtesy. I, I think they're uh, uh, Rainier can probably just say to make a motion. And they probably would to just say, well, I don't think that's fair, uh, fair treatment, and we just won't pay it. I, I didn't want to get to that point. You know? They're getting billed from these schools now. Yeah. A portion of the electric. Or, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you want to let it drop? That's fine. Let the each, uh, the Rainier board figure out what they want to do. I just presented the case, and all right. You just want to move on then. That's my my opinion. Right. Move on. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Approval of the 2014 audit. Uh, you guys all have last month to take. Yeah, we review. So move to approve. All right. This is second. I'll second. Okay. Doug seconded. Uh, discussion. This doesn't mean we're extending there. Contract. Well, that's a done deal. If we extended it for a year, one year okay. for one year, right? Okay. And do you think we're using the right type of accounting firm? I don't really know. I don't know that much about accounting no, either. No. But I mean, well, you have to have somebody that's knowledgeable in these grants and things where we're getting our money. There's certain rules that. This board has to go by in the auditing and, and all of these same things. Has anybody read it from one end to the other? <laughs> I've tried to yeah. understand it, but I a lot of it I don't. About a quarter of it. Yeah. There's uh, some statements in the back. Good for you. Let's Just letting you know. <laughs> there are some statements in the back that are. Now notifying that we have some discrepancies or whatever you call it. The only serious one that, that I seen in it was the one that Stacy just cleared up. But and that was on our checks. They weren't uh, there wasn't a declaration statement printed on them. We were informed of that during the budget and uh, we have such a huge check uh, uh, stock that uh, 
and just have a stamp now and we'll stamp them until we have to order new stock and that'll have it printed on the back. It's just a new law that's like two years old, we didn't know anything about it. Yeah. City wasn't even doing it for a while now. Now they've got it printed on the back. They were using a hand printer for a while. Too. But anyway, in, in, in a corrective action plan of some of these, uh, it states the district board will attempt to monitor. I was never made aware of any of these things prior to this audit. And it's on, on every one of them. Uh, the district board has determined, I never determined anything because I never saw it. So somebody else had to tell that auditor that. I don't care who it was. And it's nothing uh, that I would say in reading that's illegal at all. I mean, it's just uh, uh, something that uh, we would have rubber stamped when they come here with it. The only thing is, there's some of the things that, one, two of the things that I have, uh, we have uh, in uh, the lifetime insurance, what is that called, defined? Post retirement? Yeah, that uh, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of, what, $150,000, $60,000 that we haven't got in a fund to guarantee that? And trying to put, uh, whatever's left from the income and expense in the audit over the last few years into that account. Yeah, we have not been keeping up. Yeah, we haven't been doing it since 2012. Yeah. Okay. okay. Dixie had decided to put it in the general fund. And that's right, 2012, yeah, she did. So with the post-retirement fund, it did, didn't end per se, but I remember now that, 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 that she asked the odd firm if she could just general fund it and just kind of get rid of that line item. I do like a line item myself. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, in uh, 2012, 13 and 14, these uh, violations, if that's what you want to call it, were noted. Discrepancies. There wasn't any of us board members deficiencies. that noted it. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. Discrepancies and deficiencies. Is it wrong? I mean, we're at the point of, uh, if I were an employee and I was concerned about my insurance, in this case insurance, after I retired, I would be looking at it. Talking to an auditor says it's, it's really not that big of an issue. He says it's there, because you're supposed to put so many dollars, whatever, into that fund to guarantee the payment. But he also said that, that if it become a problem, the board would have to, if they had a fund, and they were having problems somewhere else, they'd have to take money out of that fund anyways to catch up on today's costs. But, but and um, he didn't see any problem with it. But I talked to him and I talked to him for an hour and on um, everything, went over everything in here and. And uh, he didn't, he told me, he said, you think you've got problems? He said, Virginia's got way more problems than you have on that particular fund. Yeah. And I so thought he said, was going to come to the board and present all this, but. We have, have to pay him. You just have to give him a date, to, uh, the exact date you want him to come and put him on the agenda. He will and we'd have to pay him all. No, this is my Oh, yeah. Mileage. Okay. Mileage. Another question. Yeah. Does these coach have an audit done too? Yes. Same firm. And so this issue with the post-retirement health, I mean... It was listed on ours also. And deficiency. It's, yeah. It had two words. Deficiency. Why is it listed on yours? Yes. Oh. It's... Because they're North Coach employees. Well, when you hire a auditor, they got to come up with all this crap. They do it every year. Well, that's they because make, of the government rules. Yeah. Yeah, the rule gas They rule. say, they right. say it's, it's nothing. The, the, the yeah. two that you mentioned, yes, but other than that, mm -hmm. I mean, it could become a problem yeah. as long as <coughs> um, the board is kept aware of it. Yeah. But you go to any any person or any organization that has the audit, you'll find the same things. Right. Right. And, well, and not all. 
Yeah. Well, probably some free balls. No, 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 no. But you know, it does scream out at you the last couple pages there about the deficiencies and stuff like that. And we have people that say, well, you know, everybody has that. Uh, that same. Well, it's been like nice to talk to the auditor themselves about it. You know. Yes, and, and he 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 explained to me there must have been some misunderstanding. Uh, if there were questions that a person had that he would either do by telephone conference. And Ryan did that last year. Yeah. Do you remember we had a conference because you guys had the same questions and he answered them via telephone. Yeah. yeah, I must not have been aware of it. Yeah, right. we did. We did talk to him. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, I would accept it. Uh, yeah. You know. Okay. Well, thanks for that, you know, following up on that. But anyway, so uh, now uh, we have to have a motion to... Uh, you have a motion. We have a motion, a second. Do we have a second? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I vote yes. 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 Okay, <coughs> Greg, uh, is Greg still here, back there? <laughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the board, just a few things that this past month, uh, we're still, we continue to clean lift stations and preventive maintenance on all our lift stations. We're just about got that wrapped up. Uh, the city's been helping us with their inductor truck and stuff, and we kind of got to trade off with them when they need help. We'll take our truck and pull pumps for them if they need it and help them change oil or service the station when they ask us. So they help us a little bit and, and then we help them in return. Uh, we've also uh, used uh, Keith Crandall. We've been going through all the, the old East Coach system, all the simplex grinders and cleaned them all out. It's been years since it's been done. So we thought it would be a good idea, a preventative thing to go out there and, and, and clean all them. Uh, like last summer, we never really had time to do any maintenance up the lake. So this summer, we're kind of concentrating up there in uh, all our lift stations and all the lift stations, in fact, changing oil on them and, and uh, servicing them, so, just so we can go into winter pretty pretty healthy. Uh, we also, last month, I mentioned about the DMRQA study when it closed. It closed July 10th. I might have made a mistake on that. Closed July uh, July 30th, but it closed July 10th. We, our lab passed with acceptable limits on all the testing that we did. So our, our lab test, uh, tested out good. I mean, we passed everything we did. We did have one contract lab, ERA out of Duluth, that does some testing for us called the wet test. It's the whole effluent toxicity testing. They sent us a letter that they failed that test. Now, <laughs> we... 15 years, they said. Their lab did. Yeah, their lab failed that. And it's been 15 years that they've had an unacceptable value. So we uh, submitted, uh, Stacy faxed uh, these papers, and we got a letter from them. And she faxed it, we faxed it to Roger Fisher. And he said, there's nothing, no more that we have to do. It's all up to them. So they're, they got a quick turnaround test coming so they can run this again, and when they, if they get acceptable values from their PT provider, that will be forwarded to Roger Fisher. He's the DMRQA coordinator. For the but it has nothing, we don't have to do no more. We passed, our lab passed, yeah. and we all of our limits were acceptable, which is a good thing. Uh, also, I mentioned last month that electric pump was gonna be in the area. They did call us. They came through, they dropped off our three horse pump that they repaired under warranty. We sent another three horse back with them at the same time. We also went out to lift station one where them 20 horse power pumps are. We pulled the new brand new 20 out of the hole and they went through uh, preventative maintenance procedures with us and color adjustments and what to look for on that new pump. Actually, it's real user friendly and we learned quite a bit from the little bit of time they did come and we pulled that pump out of there. So that was good. Uh, also, we've been still running our belt filter press, making uh, sludge thickener out of the digester, trying to get that done completely empty by the time Mount Environmental is going to haul our sludge or biosolids for us, and they'll be either hauling at the end of this month or the first part of September. So we have been continuing to run that. 
on a weekly basis, so we know we're in good shape there. A uh, couple other things. Looks like on August 6th we had a power outage out in East Cooch at Lift Station 1. Our main station, the power was out, so we had to move quickly on it. We got our emergency generator out there, fired it up, and then actually the generator ran for about two and a half hours before the, the power company had the power back on. And it ran real well. I mean, it's good exercise for the generator and, and that for us too, you know. Have you been right. having good response on emergency outages? Yeah, they get things. You mean as far as the power company? Yeah, as far as yeah, real good. And that's always Minnesota Power. You have some in North Country, do it. Uh, North Star once in a while. North Star. Yeah. Uh, How is their response? It's pretty good. It's just you know they seem to have a little bit longer time to find the problem. Oh. Okay. Uh, also this month we did, we met all our effluent standards. And also uh, another thing here is uh, this, this, uh, the clarifiers. There's these scrapers in the bottom that are kind of wore out. We called Lakeside to get pricing on these squeegees, they call it. And they seem kind of expensive from us from, from Lakes through Lakeside. So what we did is we took one off, we brought it up to Green Tech. And they gave us a price on stainless steel squeegees for the clarifiers. And they came in at about half the price of what you can get them through Lakeside. They can make them for half that price. So it's probably, you know, be smart to go through them. Yeah, I think we, can, made. we can look at them as a vendor on a few things, I think. Yeah. That, <clears throat> that wouldn't change any, any uh, warranties or anything like that as far as the rate goes. And I don't think so. I shouldn't. It's just a scraper that works. Huh? By, because we're not using their parts, we're, we're going to... Manufacturing. The warranty's probably, what? I, I, oh, this is on your system from 1986. Well, it's on the old... Right, I mean, it's on your train A. Train A. Yeah, so I mean... That, that was yeah, that's on the old a, system. Okay. In the, <coughs> on the scrapers. Right. Yeah. So I mean, they're, yeah. They're right. warranty, yeah. yeah. Also, like Mark mentioned, Engineering America, they just called the other day, they want to know when they can come and inspect the tank, the sludge storage tank. And we told them as soon as we get an empty, there'll be a window there so they can come up and in inspect that. Yeah, because we're going to have to try to empty it completely and drain all the lines back so we're ready to go into winter without having to have sludge in that tank and run the mixer. I think I've said is that, that a, Is that part of the project? Or part of the, the, uh, the inspection? Yeah. Yep. They're coming at no cost. Yeah. Because we weren't able to, they weren't able to come before and inspect it because we had to start putting solids in there. Yeah. Okay. Also, I think we got on the agenda is uh, the filter building. There's two air compressors over there, Quincy air compressors. They're going to be close to uh, oil change or major maintenance on them. And we got a, I believe we got a price from. John Henry Foster, that's who supplied the air compressors. They were gonna, they wanted to possibly come in August here, but our, the time on the, they're calling for 8,000 hours on the compressors before you change oil and stuff. And we're at about the 6,000 hour mark. They said they'll be in the area, they'll be coming through the end of October, and they're wondering if the, that would be a good time for them to possibly come through and go through them compressors with us. We're thinking it'd be a good idea for them to come in and, and then we can be there with them complete oil change, all the filters, the air dryers, and, and the voltages, whatever they do for a, a complete maintenance on them. There's a 10-year warranty on them. There's a lot of money sitting over there. It's probably a smart idea to have them. And I already discussed that, as Greg said, but um, there's a price increase, and they're, they're being pretty good at extending that price increase on the force. We're not going to get it, but we'll do it at the original agreed price on so. Yeah, they'll do it at the original price, they said. And yeah, said, we can change again, and we can change oil and see. We do every month. We every thousand hours ourselves. What we do is we change the oil filters. We check the oil levels. We also send an oil sample in to John Henry Foster. If there's anything wrong with the oil, immediately you get an email from them that there's a problem. But we've been religiously sending in that oil sample every thousand hours. But they call for a complete oil change at eight thousand hours, and then they'll check voltages and. Air and all that stuff. That makes sense. Is eight thousand about a year's worth? Huh? Is eight thousand about a year's worth, or no? That's about uh, two years worth. Okay. Two years. 
That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all I got. Okay. Any Steve. Um the generator pump when the power went out at the yep. uh, station one. Does that mean it still goes through the meter or it's bypassing yeah, the yeah. meter? Yeah, okay. we just had to get the generator up and running to, start to run the pumps. Okay. So if the pump ain't running, it's not going through the flow meter. Oh, so if we got that up and running, it goes through the flow meter. Okay. And it ran, like I say, it ran for about two and a half hours. We just did not want to back that system up. This power was out in French Edition area there, but everything else up the line from Minnesota Power was still, still pumping running. through that yeah. station. Mm -hmm. That's why we had to move quickly on it and get that generator on it. And it ran for about two and a half hours before they got the problem fixed. I guess there was two different areas where they had problems. Okay. On the um, grinder pump uh, cleaning and that, yep. that's uh, the old East Cooch. That's the grinder Beach stations Road. is the old East Cooch. City about Beach 64 Road. grinders up to about yeah, almost Lindy's. And they were put in in the early 80s. Yep. The so 80s. are you finding any any Rusting are these galvanized these tanks on these grinders? Uh, we're finding some of the rails are bad and also some of the canister walls in there that kind of need some attention too. Do you have spares? Spare canisters? Yeah, no. 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 Hmm. That's, an issue. That's an issue East Cooch is going to have to face eventually. Yeah. yeah, and it may be a big problem. For the yeah. Those are the old ones, are they too? 200 gallon reservoirs or like they're three ones? foot i'd have to figure it out exactly yeah. some of them are eight feet and some are 10 feet deep okay a couple deeper ones but they're a little bit bigger canister than the, the jackfish jack ones okay. yeah and jackfish are, are two foot 200 gallon well it all depends how deep they are oh, okay and how much water you keep in them with the control and where the are. invert is yeah. okay you know you don't want to fill them full full okay. back into somebody's house can we move on to the director's report and very quickly, Mr. Chairman, uh, the annual Human Healthy Services uh, GSA report for the building was done. JC and I finished that up. Uh, working on preliminary budget for the budget committee, which you're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, staff visits, Greg's been real good every morning to come over, and if he's not, uh, one of the other lead guys will come over. Insurance issues, I'm glad we're getting that rectified, and I'll try to do the best job I can to, uh, to get what you start looking to do. Uh, we got the map over there. Uh, information from the Minnesota cities, they were very helpful. Again, uh, nothing on the Pelham letter. Um, glad you gave the okay to at least try to get these uh, uh, release of liens uh, taken care of. And Mark, I think we all of, just about got all of the clients for John Thomas, except maybe the as builts and all the OM manuals that they want by the. Am I off? Yeah, well, we have the one for WW Getch that we have to get on your pumps P3839 yeah. and 40. Yeah. Okay. One, one, one in missing in action. And Thomas, John Thomas wants that or make sure it's on site. It's part of his compliance. Okay. Okay. All right. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any questions? Oh, I, I, I got a question on this um, dumping here, like Crand Crandall, you know? Uh, what's that? On Crandall's dumping, if you look at your income and expense. Now, when Carl Brown, where, where does he dump? Mm -hmm. No, the there. In there. Who, uh, who, pay, who pays for that? No, the air charges Brown. We, it goes into our system. But, Carl, but so he charges? He charges. Carl. Brown, we charge Northern Ear. That is metered there. Okay. What is that for? Could he dump it into Northern Ear? Is metered? He, he, he dump dumps into, into Northern Ear. Lift station. Lift station, okay. Northern Ear builds it. All the stuff that Northern Ear pumps into our system through their lift station there is metered mm -hmm. and we charge Northern Air. Yeah, but I mean, Northern Air is the only one that's paying there. Uh, some of that effluent that we're talking about, a lot of it comes from Canada. But I mean, and that's immaterial. But if he's dumping in there, he should be billed by North Cooch. 
Just like what? Uh, who's there? Crandall. The same thing as Crandall. Hi. Any one of them dumpers that are dumped into our system should be billed Northern by us. Northern Air is neither. I could send you this. Yeah, and that's what I just Northern said. Air. I am talking. Yeah, what's his name? Brown. Brown. I'm talking about Brown. If Brown comes and dumps in a business, because he's charging. Right. If he's dumping into your system, you should be billing him, not somebody else. We tried to get that, but uh, they wouldn't. They, 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 there's no place for to construct a dumping place for specifically Brown when the system was put in. I understand that, but don't let them dump then. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we should be getting the money from that dump. We do. We, we get paid. You, we do. You How? do through. How? Well, we but build doesn't e scooters. <coughs> it's flow e scooter generator. It comes this way. Yeah, that's built in the normal fashion. It's, it's just another collection. I bought well, I mean, Crandall. Does Crandall pay the same price per gallon as you do? No, it pays a lot more. It pays okay. a lot more. Okay. Yeah. Then he should be paying a lot more. Well, that's whatever. Yeah, yeah. And but I should North probably should do. Be you probably do bill them more, don't you? What is oh. it? He is it? Oh, Brown okay. dumps into Northern Ear. Yeah. Northern Ear charges Brown. Yeah. We charge Northern Ear because that line is metered coming do you, up. Do you charge them for, uh, are these, is this septic, some of the septic tank or is it a holding tank or what? No, it's a, it's how right, much, uh, it's a lift station. How much, no. does, how much does Carl pay uh, Northern Ear? I don't know. But we should find we, out. We charge Northern Ear the same as we charge one stop is metered, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know who else is metered. But uh, Don, I think that if it's extra strength waste, then there it's required that you have a, a different charging system. That stuff is supposed to be inspected. Yeah, but just an example. If Crandall, if I went and told Crandall, I said, hey, come on over and dump at my place. And I'll pay your sewer cost. He comes in, you give me 25 bucks. And I don't pay a dime after my water meter. Not a dime. So I can put all that money in my pocket. And we're paying to... It would be metered. How, where is it going to be metered? We would insist that a meter be installed. Like we did... For Northern Ear. Do you Northern Ear is doesn't no. have to be. Do you meter Crandall's? Or is this a flat that's, fee? That's, that's a flat, flat fee. Flat fee. Yeah. Flat fee, right? Yeah. Then he should have to pay a flat fee to North Cooch to dump into that fish station. And to, and let them people decide how many gallons he's dumping. We shouldn't have to. But I I think the reason that they do it this way is because Brown barges his to some place where he can dump it versus Crandall driving being able to drive to the ponds to be able to dump it and so when the way I understand it yeah. when Brown dumps at Northern Air it's metered so so Northern Air is getting charged for however much yeah. Brown dumps there we're charging Northern Air for that they yeah, were charging them about six bucks uh, whatever it is, yeah. then they turn around and charge Brown as much as they want to. We well, understand is North that Cooch, right or wrong? Mm. But in, in answer to that, right over at Mr. Thompson's at Jackfish, he could run there and do the same thing. Same thing. Doesn't Good. make any difference. Unless you get caught. No, he could do the same thing. Because he'd be saying paying the same bill, you'd have to bill him. Well, then we but would insist that he that it be metered. It is metered right there. But what I'm getting at is all he has to do is pull that barge in and back a uh, a dump truck up to it, pump it in there, bring it to the falls, and pay like everybody else does. That's a that's a solution. you know I mean that's all that, I'm saying. That's a solution. I mean, one, one, one Carl is ordered to bring in samples to case one. Two, you know, are supposed to be kind of in a district to make the water quality good and and I know it's Carl sometimes finds unique ways to make money but the service he does does help our water quality 
But it wouldn't change it if you put it in Crandall's truck and hauled it to town. That's what I'm saying. That was discussed five years ago, Dave, to yeah. do that. But East Cooch and North Cooch kind of thought, and, and East Cooch did most of it, felt it would be a lot easier to put an intake at Northern Air. It's metered. Uh, Garvey, whoever's there, he does that, and then we do our readings. So. But I think, I think our concern would be if it's extra strength waste, then it should be charged as extra strength waste because, you know, we have to treat it. We charge other people a higher amount for extra strength waste. And we've had discussion about the Black Death sometimes. Yeah. Actually, you know, so. so can we maybe, yeah, that's a valid point. Yeah. It should be looked into. Yeah. I mean, okay. And make make it easy All right. fair for everybody. Okay. Uh, Senate Budget Committee meeting. Um, Bonnie, we've got our chairman, and I will be you. And we maybe meet next week. We should have numbers by then. Can we set it for the first rain day? <laughs> you already got it. Wednesday. Budget yeah. committees. Yeah, I think we're just going to do a, a committee of the whole again just to start out, okay? Because yeah. I think everybody should familiarize themselves with the budget process anyway, and then maybe later on if we have agreement on things, which we probably won't have, but then we could cut it down and whatever to the required, uh, at least the required number of people, or even more. We can we can have more than the the three. Uh, uh, are the International Falls contingent willing to face the wrath of Betty if we go into a little bit of September? Because I know they want budget numbers pretty quick. Oh, I'm yeah. sure will. Okay. I can go talk to Betty. How about uh, like the first or second week? We can first or second week in the... Oh, we can do, we, yeah, we can do the 31st to the 4th of September in that week. That Labor Day weekend? Yeah. You won't be here? No. You should be here. Well, I'm, I'm gone that week. Okay, you can Come back that. for the meeting and then you can call again. I'll be gone fishing. <laughs> you know, uh, no, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's off. always going to be, you know, if we have a committee of the whole, that's a thing. It's going to be tough. How about tough. 8th, 9th, or 10th September? What's that? 8th, 9th, or 10th. Does that work for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm let's, let's do it so everybody's here. <laughs> Any day. Any, Any day. Right? I know you've been, you're busy though. <laughs> Why is the 11th? Got a funny color on it. Fridays are always killer. 9 11? Oh, is that why it's 9 11? Uh, it's not a holiday or anything. That's an official observance. Okay. Yeah, 8th, 9th, or 10th. 8th, 9th, or 10th. 8th, 9th, or 10th? Consensus? 8th? Yes? You're the chair. No, no, no but I mean, I want to make sure everybody's okay, okay with it. Fine with me, John. Just call me the day before. That'd be eight. Eight, uh, eighth is a what? Uh, so what Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. Just email everybody, Stacy. Okay. That's, that's all I want. The eighth? How about the eighth? You want to try the eighth? Or do you want tenth, huh? Yeah. Steve? Yeah. How about tenth? 8 a.m. Okay. Tenth? I only have one day I can't be here. That's the 14th. Tuesday, of course. No, that's the 14th. That's uh, the tenth, day. huh? September 10th, 8 a.m.? Unless my wife tells me I can't. I got it. She's my schedule. Uh, a Maybe. question came up this morning on these cows. Um, are they open to the public? It cows wasn't, are open to the was public. Not, it was not published or anything, this one this morning. The one this morning? Yeah, 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 right, there. Yeah, was, right there. I read okay. Yeah, no, no, we're, we were fine. Okay. The public okay. could come in. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, was, All right. it was posted. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. City Hall. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, it's September 10th, and we'll set that for. And I got a full email that, so I put it. And then if you email it, it goes right to my calendar. And then September 10th at what time? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Mr. Chairman will also email all of the members, uh, staffs, budget, and description. We won't do every line, but descriptions of critical lines for your information. Good. Okay, that's good. All right. Um, okay. Okay, it was noticed, but on the agenda it says 8 a.m. I wonder if we shouldn't have it, if we have an early one, above. You had a separate agenda yeah, a separate for the whole agenda. thing. Yeah. You had your first agenda that was given to yeah. you. It was. Yeah, I think we did okay here. For your special meeting. Yeah, it was on top of your packet this morning. Yeah, yeah I think we're... we're, we're um, yeah, all right. Fair, 
Okay, can you move on? Then? Well, right. one thing, and maybe I shouldn't be bringing it up here, but there's um, something that I've had a problem with since April. And uh, it's about uh, the wages of the executive director uh, at this meeting that we're coming to. I would like to have all recorded actions, including motions, adopted by the board and any actions both verbally and in writing by the executive director pertaining to the hours of work, the work week, the setting of his salary, the hours we ready to pay, the establishment of the health reimbursement account, any fringe benefits, any monetary costs for the executive director for the years 2002 to 2015 be copied for review by the board. Is the purpose of seeking this is to have the facts as to what the board of directors has established and what may have crept in through other actions. This is in keeping with legislation and bylaws of the district and in particular, the board shall have complete authority over all financial affairs of North Coots Area Sanitary District and shall be responsible for determining all expenses of the district and in auditing and settling accounts and in the collection, safekeeping and disbursement of all public monies coming into its hands. Uh, we, the members of this board, can be held responsible, personally liable for any expenditures that the district makes and we need to have a complete understanding of what previous boards have approved against what is being expended as costs for the executive director position. Okay, that uh, you want that? Uh, you think? Yeah, I'll, I want it on that meeting, or I can uh, finish my discussion right now. You're saying want. this is germane to the budget, then? That. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 You know. uh, and I'll cut it off there if, All right. and bring it up at this. <clears throat> All right. Okay, then we can move on. Yes. To, uh, yeah, I'm glad uh, Mark is still here. The Border State's bank concern over landscaping. Do you know what, what what's that about, the board? At an issue with them, uh, it's a road that used to go to Jerry Jensen's. It's not done yet. It's got to be completely cleaned up and ditched and then seeded and make sure the water flow goes. There's no puddling or sediment. That pile out there has got to be taken care of. They just want one that corner that we had that during use make sure that's back to original they're being very good i told her if it's not done by next spring not done by this fall it'll be done next spring the way it's looking and i don't know if mark can agree with me or disagree with me if you guys are not expanding the seventy five thousand until everything is done so i'm probably look, probably looking at somebody like tree service or shrubs or somebody finishing this landscaping all right. See, landscaping is one of it's not. We're not planting shrubs or anything. We're no, I shrub, 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 shrub. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. yeah we aren't going to have to deal with uh, gritter on this one. I, of course, it's, it's all gritter's business. But if they don't do it, we're going to have to do it. But we would have to notify gritter before doing before hiring another contractor. Yep. We would have to notify gritter and explain to them, you know, this is exceeding time limits in the mediation we're going to hire somebody else and pay them all of the money that we will need in the mediation there's a timeline they were supposed to have this stuff done. yeah okay we got that uh, ability to do that we can we can try i don't know well, i guess right now uh ask me if you consolidate the punch list list that is still one of those on there i will just make note to greater construction that you know the the owner who you know obliged us for two or three and a half years of construction as a concern, they want if you know if you don't address it, then the board will be taking other action to be, you know, to get it, you know, to get it completed per the property owner. What, what does it normally say in the original specs when they say that uh, site rehabilitation? I mean, pretty generic type terminology they use when they say that things have to be put back the way that they are. Or is there any way to enforce, really enforce that though? Well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. yeah. From the standpoint that was a payout, I mean, there, you know, the, he had to put in the temporary access road, and he had to take the access road out, and then, you know, they were to restore, you know, the you know the lawn, essentially restore the lawn to the existing prior condition, you know, to the access road being put in. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't we be better off to get rid of 
now from the two contractors and then you can tell them the price that that one's going to cost. <coughs> oh, I mean, Tom Ritter? You could do that. I mean, if you wanted to, I mean, somebody, I guess, would have to set up what's expected for the, uh, you know, the restoration and, you know, how to fix it up so that you're getting apples and apples and, you know, whatever quotes yeah. you get from well, somebody. You know, you know, no matter what, they were they were good neighbors throughout this whole thing. They put up with a lot, so I think we've got to... They were very good with us. Mm -hmm. Take care of them. Even I mean, if, 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 you know, if Chopper wants to give you a couple names, I can send a request. I mean, it's, you know, we, we know the area, and it's, like you say, we're not planting new trees or anything. I mean, we're restoring the lawn and, you know, doing the shaping, because they, it, you know, I mean, it's, it's as much weeds growing there right now as it is lawn. It would be nice if, and we can do it locally. I mean, bro, how about that? Not that much. It's a little aesthetic work there and a pile of dirt. I don't know if Ritter had that, you know, selected for some place. Uh -huh. Find more. What do, you, what do you think? It's supposed to be done by now. Uh, ten, I mean, 10,000, 5,000? No. Uh, sure. A couple thousand? No. I don't know. I haven't looked at it. Just, I just, yeah, I would just, just get, I would get them over there. Say, give us a price. Give us a price. Send that information to Gritter and say, if you're not going to get this done, we're going to move forward with it. Set a date. So by September 15th, we want it done. I'll call Shrub and call Mark to get it. Well, that way they can help. Oh, that's right. we got to eat too. We can have yeah. I mean, you can't just do it. No. Um, I'll send you a figure. You're giving that okay, okay, that's taken care of. We don't need a motion or anything for no. that. Okay. And uh, correspondence. The... Uh, PFA loan repayment. Um, that's what we're required to do, and that's going to be done. That's your principal and interest, and then have an interest payment, of course, um, in, February. in February, February of next year. February of next year, you got an interest payment. August of next year, you have a principal and interest payment. Okay. All right. Is there any other business? <clears throat> no, but uh, on this insurance. I just talked with a person here the other day, and I'll give you an example about insurance policies. This person called me, and they had an accident, and uh, the bill was a little over $7,000. And he was hollering at Obama because he had to pay the whole bill. And I said, well, it can't be. He said, well, it is. And I said, well, let me see your insurance policy. So he brings out his insurance policy. He's got a $10,000 deductible. And he pays $565 a month. And because that's all he paid for, that's why he paid the $7,000. Yeah. That's, you know, in a nutshell, I mean, it's uh, insurance is expensive, and it's expensive no matter which way you go. Yeah. You either pay up front or right. you pay on the back end. And I mean, it can break people even if you have a policy. It'll well, break you. With ours, it's, it's a $3,000 deductible. I'll be paying all year to pay off John's mail with it. Yep. But, you know, and it's $3,000. $10,000 could... Yeah. It would be too, you know, it, too it's, much. I mean, as long as we're in the vein that we, we talked about, you know, uh, Cadillac plans. Well, you know, I don't think that what we got right now is a Cadillac plan. I mean, it's a, a fairly... It was a $300 deductible. Now it's a Cadillac. Yeah, yeah, right. It used to be 300 now, and Before, it was a zero, probably a 10 buck deductible, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, whatever. You know, so this is... It's mm -hmm. not as good a policy as we mm -hmm. used to have. I don't think it's a Cadillac policy. You tell that fellow to stay alive, all he's got to do is pay for $2 a month. But what you got to watch about the insurance? Tell that fellow all he really has to yeah. pay $50. You pay the bill off to me, yeah. I, I, I went yeah. to the Mayo Clinic and it cost me 27 grand on my part. Because they wouldn't uh, recognize them as a... Network you know, in network. network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got uh, that's and I wouldn't have the worry about. any insurance that, yeah. that doesn't take... Uh, I don't know. You should pre-approve every time. Try to anytime you got to have something done, you should pre-approve it. You know, with your insurance. And, yeah, but I've been dead. Uh, but who's got time for that? I'm laying there with a heart attack. You know. Well, oh, that's always good. My life, you want to get out. And I think I called before we went. John was a checkup, and then policy just changed. I called before we went to see if we were covered. PFA will be reflected on disbursements next month. Um, pretty good life insurance well, no, because it's wired. It'll be reflected in oh, the Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that'll be on disbursements and disbursements next it month. It won't be in disbursements. No, just in Because it, it's a wire transfer from Bremer Bank, so it will be reflected in the statement. 
Oh, okay, for the, uh, okay, on the Blanket authorization, you know? Hmm. Where is it? Oh, oh. How is it? I mean, you want to prove it, we can approve it right now. With consent. Huh? No, I'm sending it to Well, I'm sending tomorrow. it today, yeah. You don't have to, it's already agreed that the yeah. amortization is... It's got to be paid. <laughs> where, where, where is it tracked in our, in our, uh, fiscal? It's, it's in the, then. when you borrow this money, okay. when you guaranteed it. Yeah, it's just fine. Any all action payments to CFA that are already been approved. You can, I mean, just for, for our, your information, it's not going to go to PFA because you have to pay it. Yeah. And that's why I put it on there for FYI because it, it just comes up as a wire transfer from Runner Bank, so the $346,000 right. is gone. All right. I move to adjourn. All second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.